So in this first video on Pythagoras' theorem, we're just going to go through the induction of who Pythagoras was, what his theorem was, and how to complete the first stage of Pythagoras' theorem, which is labelling the sides of a triangle correctly. So before we move on to what Pythagoras' most famous theorem is, let's have a look at the man himself. So Pythagoras of Samos, which back dates from 570 to 495 BC, is often described as the first pure mathematician. He was an extremely important figure in the development of mathematics, yet we know relatively little about the man. Unlike many later great Greek mathematicians, where at least we have some of the books that they wrote, we have absolutely nothing about Pythagoras' sort of theories or writings. And the society in which he led was half religious and half scientific, and followed a code of sworn secrecy, which certainly means that today Pythagoras is a bit of a man of mystery. Now obviously it's definitely worth um, researching a bit more on Pythagoras and some of his sort of lifestyles are definitely a lot more fascinating than maybe potentially some of his theories. Now moving on to what Pythagoras' most famous theor uh, theories are. So one of Pythagoras' most common achievements was the discovery that connected the lengths of the sides of right angle triangles. And he discovered that the sum of the lengths of squares of the perpendicular sides was equal to the diagonal length. So having a look at this diagram, what he discovered that if he drew, if he first initially drew a right angle triangle and then draw squares of lengths of the sides of that right angle triangle, then what he discovered is that the area of the blue square added together of the area of the yellow square was equal to the area of the green square. So what he discovered is that the area of the blue square added together with the area of the yellow square was actually equal to the area of the green square so which is quite fascinating when you see this and in any triangle that you any right angle triangle you draw if you were to replicate this diagram you would also find that to be true now, moving on to what Pythagoras' theorem actually is, is that when a triangle is labelled ABC, where the, the diagonal is labelled to C, or the side on which, you could, depending on the orientation of that triangle, they all could be diagonal, but the diagonal length is here is where the side that's opposite the right angle, and the other two sides are labelled A and B, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this is a really important theory that you need to remember. And this is what Pythagoras is more prominently famous for, is discovering this theory. Now, as well as remembering this formula, you also need to remember the labelling of this triangle, which is what this video is going to try and get you to be more proficient at. So, moving on to this, if we look at more delve in towards the triangle, there are some important things that you need to be able to do. So, when it comes to labeling a right angle triangle, the first thing you wanna do is label C. So label side C first. Now, in a triangle, sometimes you might get your right angle drawn exactly how you can see on the screen. Sometimes it might be drawn like this. Sometimes it might be drawn like that where the side is a little bit different or it could be drawn something like this where it's slightly diagonal or it could be drawn something like this and sometimes it could even be drawn as something like that and so don't automatically think now although C is the longest side of the triangle it's also always and how I always remember it and how I always fight, figure out what C is uh, straight away, it's always opposite the right angle. Now in any right angle triangle, they'll always represent the right angle with a little square. So it's always opposite 90 degrees. So C is, should always be your first point when it comes to labeling. Now your A and B, it doesn't really matter, could be labeled as in any order. So on the diagram, this, the height of the triangle is labeled as A, but I could easily have called that B and easily have called the base of that triangle A. So the labeling of A and B has no major significance to what we're gonna be doing. The most important thing you need to be able to spot is what C is. And C is always the longest side of the triangle. Although that's a very good sort of rule to have, I always say that it's always opposite the 90 degrees. Cause like I said, depending on some diagrams, it can be a little bit tricky to decide which side 
is the triangle and also we always have a little disclaimer on these questions that the diagram is never drawn to scale so c is always the side that's uh, opposite the little square or the 90 degree angle so moving on from this let's have a look at labeling the triangle now, if you'd like to have a go at labelling these triangles before we go through the answers, then feel free to pause the video, copy the diagrams to the best of your ability, don't worry too much of the not to scale as long as just represent the 90 degrees with a little box in the corner, and then all you need to do is label your A, B and C. Now, with regards to the first question here, so again, always starting with C, so I'm highlighting where my right angle is, and I label the opposite side as C, and your other two sides are going to be A and B. For question two, again, I'm looking out for the right angle and whichever side is opposite, that's going to be C and your other two sides are going to be A and B. Now, don't worry too much if you've labelled your A and B different to how I've labelled it, you've got them all the way around, it's still correct. And also, just try and make sure that your A's don't look like 9's because you don't want to get confused or make a silly mistake based on your handwriting. So again, look out for the right angle. The side that's opposite is always C and your other two sides are A and B. For question four, this side is going to be C and your other two sides are going to be A and B. For question five, this side is going to be C, this is going to be A and this is going to be B. And finally for question six, now when a triangle is represented in this, in this sort of orientation, a lot of people label this side as C because they always think, all right, that's the diagonal, when actually it isn't. The longest side of this particular triangle is actually the base of the triangle, which again, is one of the reasons why I always recommend that if you look out for the 90 degree box, C is always the side that's opposite that box and then the other two sides are A and B. Now, this is in itself is not Pythagoras' theorem. So if you think to yourself, oh, actually, this is not too bad and you're finding this really easy, then this is just a starting point. I have to admit that if you struggle to label the sides of a right angle triangle, then the next stage when we actually apply Pythagoras' theorem is going to be incredibly difficult. So and that which is what we're going to lead on to next in the next video.